coming up right now who is doing comedy tonight and she's really funny. Give a nice hand for Chelsea to comedy. Come on, give her a hand. Chelsea. Come on, Chelsea. Hey, Spear. Holy shit. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. What's going on? So uh, I'm Chelsea Takami. I was in a bar the other night. I was talking to this guy, and uh, I told him, half Japanese, half Colombian. And uh, I used to go by the name, my full name, Chelsea Sanchez Miyazaki. And he goes, "Wow, that's like rice on rice on rice." <laughs> to be said about Asians. They're good at karate. <laughs> we'll get to that. They're bad drivers. <laughs> it's true, though. I know, I lived in Flushing. Anybody been in Flushing before? Worst fucking drivers in the world. <laughs> Honestly, the DMV should just have their road test be, you start off at Utopia, and you go to Main Street Flushing, you get there unscathed, you pass. <laughs> really though, the reason that half of Flushing's population, and I know because I live there, has their license, is because they paid off the motor vehicle department. <laughs> it's expensive. Cost me 850 bucks. <laughs> I did, in my time in Flushing, get really good at defensive driving, though. I did get good at it. You know why? Because I learned how to dodge every other Asian. <laughs> I did get into an accident on Northern Boulevard, though. Right in front of my Japanese dad's karate school. <laughs> True story. <sighs> it was my fault, though. I rear-ended a car full of Mexicans. I said, ah, shit. I don't want to call the cops. My dad would look out the window and see I'm a horrible driver just like he is. He'd be upset to know that that part of me takes after his side of the family. So I decided to go with my Hispanic half and play Let's Make a Game. <laughs> I told him, please don't call the cops. My dad's got this dojo. I offered them a free karate lesson. We settled on weapons classes. <laughs> the next day, four Mexicans walk into the dojo. They're carrying nunchucks, machetes, and AR-15s. <laughs> The fucked up thing is that nobody in the dojo batted an eye. They all thought they were my mom's family. Oh, shit. All right. Let's talk, let's talk about my dating life. It's unfortunate. What's up with guys and their dogs? I was, I'm on a date last week, it's going well, we go back to his house, we're on the couch, we're watching Netflix. His dog is adorable, he's a mastiff, 120 pounds, he's got a beautiful coat, these big watery eyes. For a dog though, biggest asshole you'll ever meet. This fucking dog jumped on the couch and bit me in the arm, right here. I was really upset. Shocked, uh, honestly. I was like, the fuck? So, I, I hear, what's the matter, baby? Are you okay? What's the matter? What's the matter? So I'm like, all right, well, at least like this guy's caring. Obviously, it's not okay. So I look at him. He's talking to the fucking dog. <laughs> then he goes to me, and he goes, I hope you have all your shots. <laughs> I said, of course I do, but you just lost yours. Yeah. 
All right, another guy, different guy, unrelated. He liked to send me Snapchats of him and his dog, like all the time. I guess he thought it was cute. He didn't know that I had just gotten like, this, other, this other guy's dog tried to eat me. So one day he sends me a selfie. It's him and his dog on the couch again. And his dog's looking up at him. And the caption is, uh, just looking for somebody to look at me the way that Daisy looks at me. <laughs> send him a picture of his wife. <laughs> That's why I only date guys with cats. <laughs> oh my god, how much more do I have left? All right. There is nothing more that I hate in this world than being woken up out of a deep sleep. Anybody else? I feel that way. Like you can't stand Hell yeah. it. Because of my job, I go to sleep late, I wake up late, I'm in the entertainment business, I need my sleep. I'm not a stripper. <laughs> per, I'm a stripper. <laughs> So you can imagine I was not happy when I hear it was before noon. I was tired. <laughs> so I open the door, I'm pissed. And this guy is standing there holding a tray of food. And I was like, what? He goes, is this 370A? I go, no, look at the mailbox. It says 370B. 370A is in the front of the house. I don't even know how he got to my back door, honestly. This guy goes, well, how do I get there? <laughs> he doesn't know I do karate. I go, you're in luck, buddy. Just stand right there, wait for the shuttle. <laughs> All right, one more thing before I go. So I'm a professional musician. I play guitar and I sing. It's what I do for a living. Yeah. You think I would be less nervous to be up here, but no, it doesn't translate. So the thing about musicians is we encounter a lot of assholes. A lot. And uh, the second thing is we can always be bought. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Our <laughs> so I'm playing a cocktail hour. I'm at a bar mitzvah. And I'm singing uh, Valerie. You know, Why don't you come on over, Valerie? Right? Every musician's nightmare. Right, sweetie? Yeah, Everybody requests it. It's so old. Anyway, whatever. So I'm playing. I'm singing and I'm playing Valerie. And this old lady comes up to me. <laughs> she looks at me. She goes, and I'm singing like this. I look at her, that. Yeah. What do you want? <laughs> no, no, the song. She goes, excuse me, long, young lady, do you have a pencil? <laughs> I'm like, lady, I'm in the middle of a song. She goes, well, I just want to hire you for my grandson's bar mitzvah. <laughs> Do I have a pencil? <laughs> Why don't you come on over, Valerie? fun. It's been great. Teachers have been amazing. Everybody that's up tonight is so funny and we just put in so much work. I'm uh, probably going to stick to the music though, but uh, <laughs> listen, if anybody needs a musician, come talk to me. I have a pencil. Thank you guys.
He has a pencil.